guys welcome back to my channel today I'm going to show you how to do a pattern drafting and next week we'll learn how to put the t-shirt together let's go ahead and have a quick look I'm showing you a full sleeve t-shirt if you need a shorter sleeve then simply reduce your sleeve length this is a semi fitted t-shirt also I'm using a jersey fabric with lycra in it so it can stretch a lot this part of the tutorial is pattern drafting only Next week, I will show you how to put this together on a normal sewing machine. You can find the links in the description box below next week. First things first, let's see what measurements we need. Please remember, you measure the body as is. You do not add any ease. When you measure, hold the measuring tape as you see in this video and measure your fullest part of the bust line. Same way the waistline and then upper hip line. Measure your shoulder from one end to the other end of your shoulder bone. Measure your body length from the nape of the neck to the hollow of your back waist. Keeping your tape measure still, measure the length of your t-shirt. Here I am taking measurements to cover the fullest part of the hip. Finally, measure your front neck depth. So let's go ahead and get started with pattern drafting. Okay, let's take the chest measurement, which is 34 inches. Okay, 34 divided by 4 is 8.5 inches. Okay, let's just mark it into 8.5. We're going to take 1 inch plus than your actual chest. So that comes to about 9.5. So let me just go ahead and mark that 9.5 like so like so and join that line in a straight line and extend it a little bit ahead because now we're going to go ahead and make the armhole marking okay so that is our chest line we're going to go and mark our hip line in a minute before that, we need to mark the armhole. So, how do you know how much you have to take, the depth of the armhole when you draft, how do you know how much you need to take? Simply divide your chest by four, and that is again eight and a half inches. So from this line, I just go and mark eight and a half inches. And now on this line, we're going to go and mark half of your shoulders. So the shoulder is 15 inches. So we don't add anything to the shoulder, so that is seven and a half. Again, come down to seven and a half here. And I just make a straight line, like so. And on the chest line, because this is the eight and a half inch mark, so we go ahead and join that. And once you've joined that, what we're going to do is we're just going to go and curve this line. Like so. And that's your armhole. Now we need to take the body length. So from the top to your body length is about 16 and a half inches as per my measurements. So from there to there, I have marked 16 and a half inches. And my waist is 28, which is, uh, if I divide it by 4, that's going to be 7. We're going to add 1 inch extra, both chest, waist and hip line. So that is 8 inches. So I just go and make a mark at 8 inches there. And our hip line normally is about, from the top, it's about 20, between 21 and 22 inches. This is just standard. You know, you've got to look at your body measurements and change it accordingly. But generally, if you take between 20, one and a half to 22, you won't go wrong. So at 22 inches, I go and mark my hip line. So hip is coming to 34 again, and between 32 and 34. So again, I go and mark the same as my chest, which is nine and a half inches. So that's that one. So now from 
the armhole point here, we go and mark these two. And then we just go and join these two points. But when you do that, you normally don't cut at, an, at a point like this. So just go and curve it a little bit. So Okay, so that is the outline. Now we need to mark the neck. Um, usually from the center front, this is called the center front, and we're marking a front pattern. And uh, we just go ahead and take probably between three and a half to four is absolutely fine if you're drafting for a t-shirt. So I'm going to take about three and a half. And then the front neck drop, it's entirely up to you. If you want a crew neck, then you're going to go for three and a half to four inches. If you want a deeper neck, scoop neck, then you go as deep as you want. Usually between seven and eight is quite deep. So I'm marking it at around six. So again, I draw a straight line from here, from the neck drop, and then I go ahead and join the neck width to the neck drop. So that gives a square neck, but obviously I don't want a square neck. So we just go and curve this to make it into a scoop neck. Now shoulder slope, we, need, we can't have the straight, we have to have a shoulder slope. But for shoulder slope, it's different with different people. Depending on how, what sort of shoulder drop you have, you need to manage it um, based on experience. And once you draft it, then you know if it's too low, too high, then you need to change this a little bit. I'm going to take three quarters of an inch right from the top. I've marked about two centimeters or three quarters of an inch. So from there to there, I'm just going to go and close that. Okay, so now that is my pattern ready. However, we haven't got any seam allowance in this one. So this is without the seam allowance. This pattern is without the seam allowance. If you're making a t-shirt with a lot of stretch fabric, then you probably don't need any seam allowance because this will sit quite tight. Even if you cut it here and then go and overlock the edges, then you're absolutely fine. It will be a tight fitted t-shirt. But if you want it ease and if you're using a normal sewing machine, then you need a, a minimum of half an inch of seam allowance. So now go ahead and mark a half inch seam allowance all around your final pattern. I'm just going to give a quarter of an inch around the neckline, not half an inch, simply because the neck will become smaller if you give half an inch and then it will kind of the drop will not be the same. So a quarter of an inch around the neckline, the rest of it is all half an inch. So now all we do is go ahead and cut the seam allowance line, the dotted line we have done. So there is your base pattern ready. Now if you're looking for a deeper armhole, usually let me just tell you a little bit about if you're wanting to draft this into a vest, then you need to know where your bust point is. So from the top of your shoulder, leave the seam allowance here. From the top of the shoulder to your bust point, uh, mine's coming about nine and a half inches, so, and then that's the bust point. But from here, I need to mark about three and a half. Between three and a half to four inches is between the apex of your bust one side to the other. That is your, um, usually the location of your nipples. In, so basically you need to know where that is and then either go and mark your neck deeper and also you can take your armhole a little bit deeper like that like so so now if you copy another pattern of this and cut out a deep deeper armhole and a deeper neckline then you have a vest pattern the last thing we need to do is, remember we did a marking here at the bottom of a fold. This is the length I needed, so I just go ahead and fold that line and just make sure that's a straight line. Fortunately, the paper will fold in a straight line as long as you have this line here joining together. 
So that's my straight line and then turn it around and see you've got a little bit extra here. So you just go ahead and trim that. So when you fold your bottom line like so and then either you overlock it or zigzag stitch whatever you're doing then that should fit perfectly. So we, when we cut this we're going to cut it like so and that will be closed as your bottom hem. Okay, that's how you draft the body pattern. The front pattern is now ready, now we need to draft the back. So let's go ahead and place this again on the side like so and just make sure this, the line here which is the centre back and the centre front is matching perfectly. And then what we do, we just basically go ahead and mark the shoulders here. Now, neckline at the back will normally be a lot less deeper than the front. So from this point, you take maybe about one and a half to two inches, or if you want a deeper back neck, then just go ahead and cut a deeper back neck. But if you cut your deeper back neck, then you will have to alter the shoulders, which I will cover in the next lesson. So I'm just going to draft the smaller neck depth at the back. So now if I take that off, that is my back pattern. So once we've done the back pattern, we need to take a little bit around the armhole. Now that was the line we marked and that is the seam allowance. And this is the line I just showed you if you're going to do a vest, then that's the line you're going to cut for the armhole. However, now front armhole needs to be deeper than the back. So starting from there, we're going to trim that line. So from here, in the center of the armhole, this is about half an inch. So you just take half an inch and kind of cut a deeper armhole because your arms will move in the front. It doesn't move towards the back. So you need that ease and that gives you a better fit. So basically we just go ahead and trim that much. So now when you place this next to your back pattern, you can see the front armhole is deeper than your back. So go ahead and cut this one, that's the back. So there is your front pattern, there's your back pattern and uh, go ahead and mark just keeping parallel to your centre marking. Just go ahead and make a mark on both the patterns, just a straight line and an arrow mark. This normally means this is the grain line. So grain line means that is the grain you have to match lengthwise when you cut your fabric. This pattern drafting, especially for jerseys and stretch knitwear, this is not for woven because the woven drafting is slightly different and you, you need to add a lot more ease into the chest. So this is how you draft a stretch jersey basic t-shirt. This is a sleeveless one. The next step is I'm going to show you how to draft a sleeve pattern. Here is the body pattern that we have drafted earlier and now we learn how to draft the sleeve pattern. So let's go ahead and place the shoulders like so and you can see the armhole gap. Now we go ahead and measure just the seam line, not the seam allowance, just the seam line. So from here, if we measure the front, this is coming up to about nine and a half inches. Then I place the nine and a half inches on this one, leaving the seam allowance because once it's joined, then we don't need it. So if I go, it's coming to about 18 and a quarter, 18 and a half inch between those two points. So let me take it as 18 and a half because I can stretch it a little bit when I'm sewing it. So that's going to be your armhole. Here is a plain sheet of fabric. So let's start drafting the sleeve pattern. So the first things first, I'm going to make a fold at the bottom. This is going to be the allowance we need for the hem. So if you need an inch wide hem or half an inch, just make that fold. So from that fold, we take the sleeve length, which is 23 and a half, but I'm going to take half an inch more just in case. And I'm going to make 
the marking here. Okay, now we measure this lee width, which is about 14 and a half inches. So I take about seven because we don't need anything extra more than that. So let's just go ahead and mark the seven inches. And we're going to draw a straight line. And now we just go ahead and mark those markings all the way like so. And I'll just extend it a little bit more. Also, I'm just going to make a mark here. So that's going to be the straight line where we're going to pattern draft the sleeve. Okay, there's the marking we did earlier. I have just cut the excess off. Okay, earlier I mentioned the sleeve, um, the upper arm as 14 inches. It was actually 13. So let's go ahead and mark six and a half. So this is half an inch inside the mark. And that's the top of the sleeve. So from here, we're going to go and mark about four inches. So from this line to this line is four inches. And leave about um, an inch, inch and a quarter from here and go and make a straight line and somewhere halfway through just make a mark like so and now gently you're going to bring this up and bring this one down like so and now join it. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure this curve and that's coming to about eight and a half. So we need to increase this depth a little bit more because we need 18 and a half inches, which will be um, nine and a quarter. So this is coming to eight and a half. So we need to go and increase this curve so that the sleeve will fit in properly. So let me go ahead and increase this curve a little bit like so, and then go ahead and measure it again. So that's coming to about nine. So this way I can stretch it a little bit. So that is my marking. I'm going to leave a little bit for um, the seam allowance. So now this is going to be the curve. Now you go and add your seam allowance right next to the sleeve. Sorry, there's a lot of markings here. Um, but if I join the line, that's going to be my cutting line because I've added the seam allowance. So from there to there, now we don't need this wide for the sleeve hem. So go ahead and measure the rest you need. This is a full sleeve. So basically you just go ahead and measure yourself like so and go quite tight and mine's coming up to about seven, seven and a half, eight inches. But just make sure your tape can pass through. Even though it's a stretchy fabric, it's um, advisable that you have a little bit extra, then you can always trim a little bit more when you sew. So that's coming to eight inches. So I'm just going to go and measure the four, which is half of my um, wrist and give, give another half an inch extra for my seam allowance. And now from here, I just go ahead and mark this line, a straight line. This is quite wide for your elbow area. So normally what I do is from this point, I just take in a curve and then that goes gently in. So this is all by practice. You've got to do a little bit and see how it fits you. And if you like it even narrower, you could just go and run another seam on top. That's the beauty of doing it with an overlocker or run another seam and cut the seam off. So it's a trial and error. Once you finish your pattern and finalize it, and then you could convert that into many different designs. Okay, so let me go ahead and cut this one and finalize my sleeve. So now with the fold as it is, I'm just going to cut this. Okay, this four, in, four, four and a half inches depth from the sleeve head going towards the armhole point, this is quite common no matter what size you are. It will only vary between about half an inch. So between four and a half to five inches, 
you should be able to get this curve. So that's how you draft a body pattern and a sleeve pattern for your stretch jersey knits. Okay. So there is the front, there's the back pattern we have done. Now we need to think about how we're going to finish the neckline. If you're going to attach a binding to the neckline, then you don't need anything extra at all. You just take kind of an inch wide binding, fold it into half, and then we're going to attach it here. The other way to do it, especially for the home sewing people, is because we use normal sewing machine, it would be advisable to use facing. So when you face it, not only you get a very neat finish, you also, it kind of makes it so much easier to sew and finish the neckline because that's where you're going to see the finished line and you don't want to look like homemade. So let me show you, I've already done my back facing. So in the colored paper, let me show you how to do the front facing. Basically, just go and lay your pattern like so and kind of match the lines here, straight line. And we just go and trace the pattern. So from the shoulder, we just go and trace the shoulder and the neckline. So once you have that, usually it, you can go wider if you like, but usually the facing will be somewhere halfway through your shoulder because if you go too wide, then you're going to put a top stitch around your facing that will be shown from the outside. That will, if it goes too wide, it, it kind of doesn't flow neatly. So I'm going to make it the same width as this. So which is going to be about, this is six centimeters or between two and a, just a little less than a two and a half inches. So just go ahead and take two and a half inches. And uh, I'm just gonna take that like so. And then exactly the same amount, you're just going to go and measure all around your neckline. So it's almost like a border all around your neckline. So there's just less than two and a half. So now just go ahead and connect it. If you're not used to this, then you might have to use the curves. And now go ahead and cut this. And then the shoulders. So there is your front facing matching to the back is now ready. So we're going to cut this like so and join the two shoulders of the facing as well. And then we're going to go and finish the neck. So when you put it around your neckline like that, you can see that's going to be in the inside. You don't see the facing on the outside like so. That is going to form a neat round. Now you might be thinking, why do we have it so long at the back when this could have gone in like a border and kind of flowed the same width as in the front? I'll show you why. Because when you do the facing, you're going to see the raw edges of your edge of this fabric, unless you bind it with something. Usually that's done by a flat lock machine, but we'll have to make do with normal sewing machine. So. Let me just fold it like so. And if I, let's say this is the inside of the fabric and that's how my front is going to sit. And when you hang it on your hanger, you'll see that you don't see any raw edges. That's the reason this facing at the back needs to be slightly longer than your front neck drop. That way you, don't, you only see a neat fabric all around it. So if we haven't overlocked the edges or just le left a little bit more, it really doesn't matter. It's still going to look very neat. So that's your whole pattern now ready, front and back facing. You've got your sleeve pattern and it's all finished now. So let's go ahead and make the actual top and see how this turns out. Okay, let's see how to make this T-shirt. Now I have taken a jersey fabric which has got stretchability both ways and it's quite stretchy but you could take a jersey that would only stretch widthwise not the lengthwise if you're a beginner probably that's more advisable because if it stretches both ways it's a bit more difficult to kind of handle but I'm going to make this in a normal machine so you can actually see how to make this. So let me place my pattern like so. Now 
two layers of fabric are folded this way so that kind of covers the whole area just to make it easier I'm just taking a little bit extra here and probably about half an inch extra then I'm going to place my front and back separately and cut it out you never cut your front and back together because they're separate so each layer of fabric the front separately back separately you need to fold it cut it on fold and then go ahead with the next step because you're going to end up with problems if you don't do it like so. So I'm just going to take a little bit extra. Okay, I might be able to get one sleeve here, but I'll have to take some more fabric for the other sleeve, which I'm going to cut later. So let me put this aside. And now I'm going to open one layer at a time. So that is the first layer. So that could be my back and this one will be my front. So the grain line is very important. Remember we, um, when we did the pattern we marked a grain line. So that is a grain line, the straight line. So your fabric, the center fold, should always be kind of parallel to this line. So if you place it like so, I can see my grain line even from the back of my pattern. So I'm just going to place it like so, possibly pin it, mark all around and just cut this out. Exactly the same way we're going to do the back as well. Once I've done my cutting, then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, here is the sleeve, there's the front and there is the back. Okay, so before we take the patterns away, you need to make sure that you make some markings. Remember there's a fold on your sleeve. I don't know if you can see it properly. I'll just try and do a little close-up. This is the bottom of the sleeve and we have a folding on the sleeve. So at this fold just go ahead and fold your fabric like so and just make a notch mark. It's very important you make this because otherwise we wouldn't know where to fold once we have sewn this. So just go ahead and make the notch mark. Here we have all the pieces cut out. There's the sleeve the front, the back, front facing and back facing. So I have done notch marks at the centre of the front facing. Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Get your patterns ready and I will see you next week to show you how to put this together. Bye bye for now.